Now if you've got a bandsaw, obviously you can cut the straight parts out easily with a bandsaw, so I'll just show you the quick way of doing that. Now for the curved parts of the box, I'm going to use my trusty Hegner fret saw. It's quite a lovely smooth machine. You can adjust the speed on it, you can have it very fast like that. Or just slow like a hand tool. I'll throw it about like that to start with. And I'm just going to cut, follow the line through as best I can. Now there's two ways when you get to the, the corner. You can go back and approach it from another angle, or you can do a three-quarter a turn like this. Keep the saw moving. There we go. And it, it does leave quite a smooth cut as you can see. And that was done very simply. Now I did that very slowly, but you can do it much faster. I'll do the next one a bit quicker. I'll turn the speed up a bit. Now, oh, there's a little bit on the end. I'll cut that off while I've got the camera there. Oh yeah, these machines are a joy to use. I I love using this machine. It's it's the one machine that you can. It's quiet and and safe. Um, my grandsons have been using this from an early age and I let them use it you know unaccompanied now because it is probably the safest machine in the workshop anyway I shouldn't be going on about that I'm making bins not talking about it. I should go on all day talking about this pretzel right we'll plug the hot milk glue gun in and we can start doing some assembly there we go. notice my special plug it's a homemade plug with a neon can you see that little neon in there? Because I always forget whether the glue gun's on or off, and with that, it does make a difference. And I just cut a hole in the top of the plug, and I actually fitted a neon it of some other piece of apparatus that I salvaged it from, so I'd know. Now you can buy plugs with neons on; they're quite expensive. Just an example: there's this one here I've, I've bought, which is actually a switch 13 amp plug, which does have a light on it there. But I find it's not so clear to see, especially when you're standing above it. You, you don't notice it. It's nowhere near as indicative as that one with a brighter light. Well, while the glue gun's heating up, um, I'll just point out I've got the parts here ready. There are the two side pieces. And then you've got the back piece and the front. I've cut these out a bit of that old tongue and grooved I showed you. Um, that'll do fine for the back and that'll be okay for the front. As I said, the paint doesn't matter. You've got to remember these are only for workshop use. They don't have to be fancy, but you might as well make them as nice as you can. Now it's a good idea to get a bit of sandpaper and just go if, on the side pieces. If they've had a trace of varnish on, I'll just give them a little wipe over like this. It cleans off any rubbish on it, any grease or anything, and any trace of any varnish. It only takes a second to do it like this. You don't need to do it, you don't want. And I always go around the edges so there's no splinters. Because it is annoying if you go to grab something out of the box and there's a great big splinter sticks in your finger. And I don't like splinters. If you're a woodworker, you get used to them. Like. So just I just go around the edges. You don't have to be too fussy. It doesn't matter, and that's perfectly fine. Do the same with the other one. It takes a little while for the glue gun to heat up. If you start using it too early, you won't get the glue out fast enough and it can be annoying so it's best to wait. So those are ready. And do the same with the front. I'd say you don't need to be too fussy. The paint doesn't matter and that helps protect them. 
I would tend to put the paint on the inside because sometimes I give my coat of paint if I happen to have some spare paint kicking about water based stuff I'll just pop a bit on so I don't need too much so say the paint on the inside will help protect it from the oily contents if you've got any old oily bolts and things in it keeps it cleaner there we go that's all the parts there I'll just see if the glue gun's ready just try it on a bit of scrap wood yeah, it's coming out, but it's not coming out quite fast enough yet. We'll give it a couple of minutes to warm up properly and then we can start the assembly. Um, now when you come to do the assembly, just decide which way you're going to do it. I'm going to put the paint on the inside. Um, it's a simple matter of putting a smear of hot melt glue on there and shoving that on there and holding it while it sets for a few seconds. You don't get much time to do this with a hot mark glue gun because this stuff dries pretty quick. So I'm just going to put a stream of glue across there, single strand like that. Try not to get your fingers on it because it will burn your fingers. If you've got a hot mark glue gun, you will burn your fingers anyway. Now I'm just holding it for a few seconds. The bubble of glue there, which I rubbed off with my finger, that didn't burn. So that's that wind done basically. And then turn it around and do the same with the front piece. Decide whether it's going on the inside or the outside, in this case on the inside. Because it isn't painted, it doesn't matter. Put a smear of glue on. You don't want too much because it's too bulky. And do the same on the front one, like that. Try and get it fairly at right angles if you can. And try and get the edges straight. It doesn't matter if they're not perfect. As I said, they're only for, for stock bins anyway. Now to do the front one, you can either, if you're quick, you can put a splodge of glue down there and a splodge down there and pop that on but sometimes it's a bit awkward because they spring about and you it might be easier to do one first and then bend it back and do the other so and if they're not completely at right angles that might uh, it might cause a problem so I'm going to do the back one first I'm just going to put a splodge of glue down there and hold that one on until it's sort of dry Now it's up to you, but um, I don't always, but sometimes it's a good idea to get a little hammer and a few small nails or panel pins. I, nails are fine. These are little galvanized three quarter inch nails and just pop, especially the back where it's higher, pop a couple of small nails in. It doesn't do any harm. You don't have to do this. If you don't want to do it, don't bother. It just makes it that little bit stronger. can only do this if the back piece is thick enough to take the nails. Use very thin wood for the back. Obviously you'll just have to rely on the glue. So I'll just nail that on. And I'm just going to do put a bit of glue down the front. So I'm just opening it out slightly with my finger like that. And I'm going to pour some glue in. Like that. And then I'm going to bend this back out a bit because the box wasn't quite square. Now I'll hold it for a few seconds. I'm going to put a couple of nails in this one because... Uh, it didn't look that strong to me. Bad carpentry. When will this man learn? As I say, you don't need, need to put nails in. I am doing it in this box, but actually I haven't done a very good job here. It doesn't look very square to me. It's a bit of a bod. Whether I cut the wood accurately, or whether I just made a bod when I was gluing it. But it doesn't it doesn't matter. It's only a stock bin. Who cares? Right, there's the main part of the box done. <laughs> don't, it doesn't look very square, does it? You can straighten it up. I'm going to spend it a bit. I don't like that. Oh, what a bo Typical, isn't it? The one you're showing, I made hundreds of these. And the one I make to show people, it looks, it's crooked. Anyway, that doesn't matter. Now, when it comes to putting the base on, I've got this bit of old bottom of a drawer. Got all those bits of spray on. It doesn't matter. It's only scrap. Uh, I'm going to use that for the base. Now, I'm putting the shiny side, the painted or treated side, on the bottom because like this one, it makes it easier to run on the shelf, whereas if you have the rougher side of the hardboard, it's friction, it's, it doesn't move so easily. It might be a minor point, it doesn't matter really. Now there's two ways of doing this. Um, depends on your ability and what you want to do. You can either uh, put a smear of hot melt glue quickly all around there and just shove it onto the bottom like that and just hold it for a few seconds and let it set and then saw it. Or you can put your box on there and draw around it like this and then cut that square out first on the bandsaw and, and glue it on. It's probably easier like that but like I say sometimes I do them in a row I've even put them on the board like that and then cut them out on the bandsaw afterwards 
So you can either stick it on and cut it with a bandsaw when it's glued, or you can cut the piece of wood out. In this case, I'm going to cut that out. Right, I've cut that piece out now, and you'll see I've cut it. That piece, that the uh, surplus piece, will be big enough for another base, so I can use that for a second box. So always try and cut it so you can the best way so you can salvage the piece for the next one. Now the main thing is now we've got to glue this on. Try and get it central so the the it, there's no gaps on the side, and then it's simply a matter of getting your hot mount glue gun and very quickly running a bead of hot mount glue all around there and jabbing it on top of there and holding it down for a few seconds but it's a bit tricky because these things dry ever so quick as you've seen seconds and so you've got to do it pretty fast now if you can't do it quick enough perhaps you're a bit fumbly with your fingers you can buy these sticks that have a slower melting time so shall we say longer melting time is probably the right word to use and they take take longer before they actually set and that might be better for this application but for lots of applications I like it like this um, but you've got to work fast so what here we go I'm gonna it's probably all gonna go wrong because I'm filming this and anyway, I'm gonna try and do it quickly you got this more the trickiest bit is along this narrow piece because the thing doesn't always go on there um, so I'm gonna have a go anyway here we go so far so good well, I've got to be quick because it's gonna dry ever so quickly Depends on the temperature as well. It's a hot day or a cold day. Put a bit more on the back there. Right, that should be all right. I think I'll do it quick for the glue sets. Pop it on the black base, making sure it's located. And just put some weight on top like that. Just hold it down as much force as you can. You don't need to do it for more than a few minutes. That's it, it's done. Now, you'll see I've left that piece on there and I can trim that off afterwards. But basically, that's the main part of it done. See that glue setting already. Wants tidying up. Now what I'm going to do uh, before we go any farther, I'm just going to trim that off. I'll do that on the bandsaw. I won't film it because you you've seen me using the bandsaw before, so I'll just quickly do that off camera. Now the other thing I should have mentioned when I got the hot glue gun, it's a good idea to go around the seam inside with a bit of hot melt glue because it. It seals the edges and it, it makes the joint much stronger. So all you need to do, excuse me, <coughs> dust. I'm gonna put some glue down in the bottom corner there. You can't see this, but I'll just run a bead of glue just down in the corner in the joints. It just helps to make it firmer. It's not absolutely essential. You don't have to do it, but it doesn't do any harm. It's just going all around the bottom. So that's that, and as I say, put some little nails in. You don't need to nail the bottom. In any case, you'd have a job to nail it to the sides because it's too too narrow. You could nail it to the back, but I haven't found it necessary. Normally, they've been, I've not had one come apart yet anyway. So that's the box finished, and we've just got to tidy up a bit now. Now, if you're lucky enough to have one of these, you can sand the box down and tidy it up very quickly. You don't have to do this, but it, I always do it because I happen to have a sanding machine. So just make sure it's on the bout for the suction. I'm going to turn it on. It's going to be a bit noisy. That's about right now. And there you have it. Now, if you haven't got a sanding machine like I use, um, you can do it quite easily with a bit of sandpaper, glass paper, whatever you want to call it. Aluminium oxide, Liberty Green paper. 
good quality stuff makes all the difference. Don't buy the cheap stuff they sell in places like Poundland because it's useless, it doesn't last long. I buy this in 10 meter long rolls or 50 meter rolls depending. Just give it a quick going over. Say so if you haven't got a sanding machine you can do this with a little plane and get the worst of it off um, or a file or just use a bit of coarse sandpaper and then a bit of fine but at the end of the day it doesn't really matter it's only a rough storage box but I think you'll agree they're quite nice um, I tend to, you can leave it like that do nothing else with it but if you've got some odd bits of paint left over from a previous project why not just paint them I just, I bought some green um, wood paint some of that water based stuff they were selling it off in one of the hardware plate. actually it was a supermarket type place um, they've closed down now I can't think of the name but they were selling it at 50 pence a pot this green um, stuff which I did my entire kitchen in it actually and I've got a few tins of it left over and I use it for things like this in the workshop because it does make it nice I mean it doesn't matter but if you just leave it there wood over time you'll get all grubby black finger marks on it and everything when you can't get it off it'll be ingrained in the wood whereas if you paint them they, they stay cleaner longer and they look nicer on the shelf not that it really matters. Anyway, that's it. That's a medium-sized one made. To make a bigger one or a smaller one, it's exactly the same process. And all you need to do is, you can keep the sides the same. If you want a wider one, make a wider front and a wider back. Job's done. Same if you want a narrower one. Or if you want a longer one, you just make this piece longer. As in, like this, or any other. You can make these very quickly. It's taken me a long time to describe it. In that time, I could have probably made about ten or more. And I'd have finished by now. Um, but uh, anyway, I hope it's of some use to somebody. And don't forget, when you're finished, turn off your hot mount glue gun. You don't want to leave it on. I think that's about it. Bye for now.